All right, guys, thanks for watching. My name is Shane Nyquist, and I'm on a quest to break the land speed record for electric motorcycle streamliner. Um, in that quest, I've been trying to find something um, that I could use for a battery. I have some iron phosphate batteries that I've been configuring for this project, but um, they seem to be not performing as well as I originally had um, tested them. So recently, my friend over at Slab Sides, Roger, um, hit me up and said he knew a guy who liquidated the Alta factory, and some of the things that he got were uh, wire bond equipment, motors, structures, you know, a bunch of tires and motorcycle stuff. But he also got some batteries. Um, he got four of them there. And uh, he was nice enough to let me come over there and check them out. And after looking online, checking out the specs, I figured I would get those and see what I could do with them. So um, if I can't use them, then I'll probably end up selling them. Um, but I did have to take one of them apart. And I'm going to show you what's inside these bad boys. Um, there's kind of a lot of cool engineering inside of them, cool stuff, and hopefully I can modify these to work with my project. So, really hope you enjoy the video. There's going to be a lot of technical stuff on this, but stay tuned. Thanks. So, here's the battery. Looks like it's 5.8 kilowatts. Um, it's got two plastic covers and aluminum housing. Um, from what I know about this, it has 18650s on the inside uh, for the form factor. And judging by the amp hours, it's something around 3.3 or 3.5 amp hours for the cell. Um, I calculated that just using the nominal voltage and the total amount of energy. So we're going to open this up. We're going to see what's inside and see if I can reconfigure it to get what I need out of it. I've set up a bunch of tools. This is mostly Torx heads, so I'm running the Makita brushless with a couple Torx bits, um, some high voltage tape, and I got some foam board to lay out my hardware. So here's a quick tip. Um, I like to basically get a foam board here and lay it out, especially when I'm working on batteries, and I just shove my hardware up into there. That way I don't lose anything, so that's always nice. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the two covers off and see what's inside. Um, this is high voltage, so I need to be a little bit careful of how I approach this. Here's the connector side. There's no voltage across that. I already checked with a voltmeter. We got our low voltage comm and what appears to be some sort of heat sink for maybe a buck down voltage regulator. And it's internally powered. Uh, but we'll see all that when we get inside of it. So first thing, I'm going to take all these off. So now we got the cover coming off. This is the BMS side. We got some, a couple comm connectors, some high voltage bus bars, and additional wires. So let me undo these real quick. All right, so I got the plastic cover off that holds the BMS and the connectors. Um, right here, you can see there's a what appears to be the one of the follow through cables that runs all the way to the back that's connected to the BMS. This is going to be our contactor connection and some uh, blind mating connectors for the pack these blind mates right here they hook into this when you put the cover on blindly so that it'll just slide right over that and you complete the connection without having to do it physically by plugging something in so pretty slick little design um, but it looks great uh, next up i'm going to take off the modules by undoing these bolts up top there's about eight of them all the way around and uh, we'll pull one of these modules out and take a look at it closer before i take this out it uh, looks like there's a little com connection up in there that little connector up in there. I gotta reach down in there and unclick the connector somehow. I've also removed the ground, which is probably for an isolation detection. Uh, but I'm gonna have to reach down in there with something metal. Um, looks like everything else is pretty protected from the high voltage. A couple little parts poking out here, but nothing too crazy. Um, so I should be able to reach in there with a little metal piece and unclick that connector. Here we go, here's a little module.
you got some uh, thermal sink material, which goes to the case, which allows you to pull heat from the bottom of the cell through this aluminum plate out to that aluminum piece and air cool it. Looks like we got a bus bar for running through from the negative side. Take this out. This appears to be the comm board on top. Um, it's connected to the PCB through this little connector. So I can pull this cover off, look at the configuration, and we should be able to figure out how much voltage, SMP count, and cell type from that. Next up, I'm gonna take off the backside module, um, which I'm assuming is the lowest voltage because this runs all the way through to the negative and then the positive starts running through that way. Um, there's another eight bolts here and then it looks like there's some bigger bolts that hold the case together. So once I get this module out, uh, we should be able to pull the cases apart and look at the two inside modules as well. Another thing I noticed about this is there's actually uh, numbers on these holes here and I'm assuming that's the tightening order. So I'm gonna try and remove that from the highest to the lowest in reverse. Um, that may be important for torquing it because it does have wire bonds inside and if you were to tweak this you could mess up those wire bonds. So I'm going to try and follow these the best I can. I didn't do it on the first one. I noticed it halfway through um, but hopefully that should be okay. I've gone ahead and labeled these. Um, this one I've put as four. This will be three, two, and then one. And that way I know which order to put them back in if there's anything special about these boards as far as location or connector type. So uh, it's a little bit gooey. All right. So here's the inside of the case with the module off. You can see there's the comm wire that runs through from the other module. We got these copper, what appear to be copper plates. I don't know if they're they got a little plug in them, which means they're probably heat pipes, which helps wick the heat away from the battery cells and out into this case so that the outside of this case can get some air cooling. Uh, that's what my assumption is, but there's also these bigger bolts, which are going to hold the case together. I'm going to take those off next, and uh, that should allow us to break the module in half. From there, I'm going to have all four modules out. I'm going to measure voltage, and uh, we're going to figure out if this bad boy will do what I want. There's another comm wire in here, so that's annoying. There's another wire running all the way through. And I think I can pull it through on the other side, but I gotta get this module out of the way first, so let me take this module out. All right, so I got this module out. I'm gonna pull this wire out. I'll pull this other module out. I'll lay them out. We'll take a look. All right, so there's the cases all off. There's a whole lot of goop on there. 
whole lot of thermal transfer goop on the inside of the case and on the bottom of the module. So I'm gonna try and keep all that on um, and not get it on my hands because this stuff gets everywhere. So I'll try and get in close, but um, this is uh, called a wire bond. It's very similar to what Tesla uses. Um, these are actually pretty big ones for the size of the cell, so they should be pretty good. And you can see here, in order to cool the cells from the bottom, they've actually wire bonded the rim, which is negative, and the cap, which is positive. They have a full-size multi-layer board that is actually the current collector. So this takes all of the current. It travels from the negative all the way to the positive through here. And if you look closely, you can see there's kind of six packs here. So that would indicate that these are six uh, parallel. And you can see here, it's a little P20. So this is 20S for the full system. And since there's four of them, that puts us at 80S. Um, normal high voltage vehicles actually are 96S, which puts you at a nominal of 350. So this is this is a really low voltage. Um, I looked at the website and it says 350 volt pack. Uh, I think that's um, a little overstated. So that's unfortunate. Um, that means that this would be too low of a voltage for my system. So when you look closely at the board, it's got some marks that say T. Let's see if I can find the other one. T4, T5. Those are thermocouples. I'm only seeing um, four of those, but it goes up to T5. So I don't know what happened to T3, but they have four thermocouples that I can see. Maybe T3 is on the inside. Um, they do have two LTC chips here, which means they could probably have eight temperature inputs. So maybe those other temperature sensors are on the back side of the current collector measuring maybe cell temperature, uh, anything like that. But all in all, very trick board. Very awesome. Cool concept. Super stoked on the build quality. Not stoked on the 20s per module so i'll have to figure something out from there all right another thing i noticed this is module four which is the bottom of the stack um, this little bmu seems to have a lot more electronics than the other bmu um, so this these two are different here don't know why it looks like this first one matches the fourth one so i'm guessing that one matches this one um, yeah interesting that would mean they have two different types of uh, slave boards oh there we go it says slave right there Alta slave you can also see here there's a white and green red and black and orange um, white and green twisted pair is probably your com so that would be maybe CAN bus or spy depending on what they did for this it's a twisted pair so Maybe CAN bus, and that would be the 12 volt ground. All right, after looking at this, I have a couple concerns about using this for my land speed bike. And I might be able to do it with modifications, but I would have to talk to someone from Alto to see if I could do that. Um, the major issue is that this is a 20S module, meaning that you have four of these, which puts me at 80S. Uh, nominal cell voltage is 3.6. 3.6 times 80. It gives me 288 nominal volts. That's way too low. My operating system, I think nominal minimum is 320. And I want to be upwards of 380 if I can. Um, even the max cell voltage would be 4.2 4 charging on these. It's 366 max volts, so that's too low. Um, what I might be able to do is stick a fifth module on here. I have four packs that would give me three strings of 5S. I know it's getting too many numbers here. But 100S on this, which would be five of these in a row, would get me 360 volts nominal, and at my peak charge, 420 volts. So that's the max of my system pretty much. I could drop this down to 4.1 for operating just to be safe. Um, I think these are the VTC6 Sony cells. A lot of vape guys use them. Um, so there's a lot of data on high discharge of those. One of the other concerns I have is the bonding method, which is the wire bonds that go on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure those and compare it to some previous data that I have to see if that would be an issue with overheating or even blowing up. Now, if these wire bonds blow, that's it. I'd have to 
find a way to wire bond it or solder little wires in there. Um, and that would be horrible. I think that's the only fusing method they have for this pack. I didn't see any little fuses on the BMS or inside the pack. Um, so that could be a problem with mine. Since I'm pulling so many amps out of it, if I blew these interconnects, the module will be toast. That being said, I'm gonna go check the spec sheet for the VTC6, uh, put six in parallel and see how many amps I can pull. Uh, my gut's kind of telling me that I could probably get about six to seven C out of 18650 like that. Um, That's 140 amps per module. Times three. 441 amps. Um, um, That's 176 kilowatts I can get with three packs in parallel of 5S of a 20S module with six P cells. That's too much. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Um, I'll have to put a, something up on the screen here because that's too much math. Just measured the wire bonds. Looks like they're 20 thou. Um, that's half a millimeter. And uh, from my experience, that actually yields a pretty good amount of amps. Um, with no air cooling, you can usually get about 50 out of them before they fuse. So that's 50 amps per cell on a 3.3, that's well over 10 C. So 33 amps out of per cell would be just fine. And that's well under the operating limit of these fuses. So that's good. All right, it's the next day. I was working pretty late, almost till like 4.30 in the morning. Um, but I did go and research the cell type, which is the VTC6 inside of there. These cells are pretty robust. There's a lot of vape data and everything else. There's a guy named, I guess, the Mooch on Reddit who has some good information about cell testing. Uh, looks like they can do 30 amps, uh, not continuous, but peak if you can keep them under 80 degrees Celsius, which is pretty high. Turns out it's a three amp hour cell, which is pretty low, um, but the discharge rates are pretty high. But that also means that it's an energy cell, so under high load it gets a pretty big voltage drop. With three of the 5S configurations, I'm going to be right at the, the limit of what I can do, and I'm going to probably have to power limit my motor. Um, for testing this will be great, um, but I probably will have to get another pack and get four of the 5S versions of these modules together to get me a total amount of power that would be well within the scope of what I could be. Um, that being said, that's a lot of work, and I need to hear back from the engineers to find out if that's something I can do with these anyway. I don't think I'll be able to use the original Master BMS, but maybe these slaves will help me do something. Um, yeah, it's, uh, definitely surprising how much energy this doesn't have as to what it's promoted. I think after doing the calculations, it was somewhere around 5 kilowatts and 300 volts. Um, so they were saying 350 volts and 5.8 uh, kilowatt hours. Um, that's not... That's not true. You know, great job on the engineering modules. are fantastic. Hopefully I can find one more pack somewhere out there in that universe of Alta guys. So if any of you guys are watching and you got to spare one of these packs, that's good. And you want to contribute to the project, hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, I'd love to hear your input as to, you know, what I got wrong or what I didn't know or what I was assuming was incorrect. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Have a good one.